So, ladies and gentlemen, now we have a graph y equals e to the negative x plus 3. So in this case, you say, well, your base, e in this case, is, does not represent a variable, right? a has to be a value of a number. And it's just your base. e is a constant that we're going to talk a little bit more about um, when we get into our compound interest. But e is going to be a constant, all right? And well, e is a constant. It's not, it, uh, it is not a variable in this case. So if I'm going to graph this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this by using my transformations. By using my transformations, I like to look at the equation of our exponential graph. Right? Remember we talked about that function? Or I presented that to you. Where b is adding outside the function, so that's going to shift the graph up and down. c is adding inside the function, so that's going to shift the graph left and right. And then we have um, plus or minus a, which means if it reflects, you know, if, if this is a negative, then we're going to reflect over the x-axis. And if this, neg if this x up here is negative, we're going to reflect across the y-axis. So when I'm graphing by transformations, uh, when I showed you guys how to graph using a table, I said, all right, create a graph and create a table. When I'm graphing by transformations, I like to graph two different functions. You don't have to graph them on different axes. You can graph them on the same. But I always like to graph the parent graph. All right. So if you don't remember what the parent graph is, now would be a good time to remember what this graph looks like. And to make sure that the one important point we have for all of our exponential functions is the y-intercept at 0, comma 1. Yes? Every single one. It doesn't matter what the base is. It doesn't matter if it's a base e. It doesn't matter if it's a base 10. It doesn't matter if it's a base 3 or 1 half. It doesn't matter. All the bases are still going to have a y-intercept at 0, comma 1. So now let's go over here and see, well, what are my transformations? What is that 3 doing? Am I adding the 3 inside or outside of my function? I am adding it outside. So therefore, it's going to shift the graph up. So you can say shift 3 units up. And then I'm multiplying a negative 1 inside or outside of my function. Inside. Very good. So yeah, I'm multiplying. This is inside my function because the function, remember, is a to the x. So the x is multiplying inside. So therefore, when it's inside, and this is all off that table that you guys wrote down, so now it's going to be a reflect the y-axis. All right? So we know that the graph crosses at 0, 1. But now we're going to shift it up 3 units. So if I start at 1 and I shift it up 3, my new y-intercept is going to be 1, 2, 3. Here's the original. Go up 3 units. 1, 2, 3. Right? But now, instead of the graph looking like this, you need to reflect it. Right? So you take the graph and you reflect it over the y-axis. So now the graph's going to look something like that. Now, to make this even more fun, is let's go back and talk about the domain and range. The domain has not been affected. Because you can see this graph still is going to continue in the positive and still going to continue in the negative direction. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity. All right? But there's also an issue, though, that we had. And that issue is going to come up with our asymptote. Remember here, my asymptote was at 0. Right? That asymptote's at 0. Well, remember, I shifted this whole graph up 3 units. So therefore, instead of my asymptote being at 0, it's now at 1, 2, 3. All right? So remember, my graph is not going to cross my asymptote. It's just going to approach it. So therefore, when we look at the range, you can say the range is going to be from, positive, or from uh, my value of 3 to infinity. Because the lowest this graph is going to go is going to be 3, which is not, doesn't contain the point 3, and it's going to go all the way up to infinity. All right, And our asymptote, a lot of times you can write that down, is going to be at y equals 3. The asymptote over here is y equals 0. But since we shifted the graph 3 units up, the asymptote is now at y equals 3. Cool. No? Excited? OK. Man, you guys are boring.
You guys want to try one?